The hydrogen economy has been something of a buzzword in recent weeks. As a number of countries have been scaling up their plans and their investment in hydrogen fueled industries, from fuel cell batteries to whole cities that mostly run on hydrogen power. South Korea is one of those countries aiming to foster some 1,000 companies specialising in hydrogen by 2040. The government will also seek to boost the number of hydrogen cars to 850,000 and hydrogen chargers to 660 units within the next 10 years. But is hydrogen power really the way forward? And can it really charge up new engines of economic growth all around the world? To discuss this, we have joining us Peter Cleary, Chair of the Australia Korea Business Council in Melbourne. How are you today? Good morning, uh, Su Young. Very well, thank you. I imagine things are much sunnier than uh, here in Korea, where it's just pouring rain. Um, I mean, here we have uh, Dr. J.R. Reagan as well, uh, CEO of Idea Explorer Glo Global, joining us from Daejeon. How are you this morning? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's great to have you on the show again. Well. Thanks. Let's start with you, uh, Mr. Cleary. So, skeptics are saying that this hype over the prospect of a hydrogen economy, we've seen this before. Um, they say it comes once every 10 years or so. But, uh, the, but these waves of interest, they haven't really produced anything tangible just yet. Do you think this time it will be different? I certainly do, Su Yong, uh, and thanks very much for your in, uh, invitation. Um, Australians and people around the world understand the importance of reducing carbon in the atmosphere. And hydrogen is one important component of creating a le uh, less carbon intensive energy system uh, in the years to come. Uh, and it's not a recent phenomenon. Australian uh, government has been investing in the hydrogen economy since 2015, has put a half a billion dollars into this. And momentum is building across the globe when you've got countries like Korea, China, Japan and the EU determined to make uh, hydrogen a part of the low carbon energy future. And also, it's one of those things that um, is only part of the story, uh, but it's an important component along with other renewable sources towards this goal. And Dr. Reagan, why do you think countries now are drawing up these national hydrogen strategies, especially as part of efforts to recover from the economic impact of COVID-19? Yeah, I think oil prices and the instability of the oil market really contributed to that in, in uh, recent years. I think there's always been uh, kind of a look, uh, as was mentioned earlier, to offset the carbon energy sources with something else. And hydrogen has always been uh, kind of a, an attractive energy uh, to go to, but it's very, very expensive. But I think with the oil prices, the instability of the market, it's just a, a necessity now to find those uh, alternative sources. And hydrogen now and the investment in that by many countries is going to be one of those sources. And Dr. Reagan, why do you think it's particularly important for South Korea to pursue this? South Korea really doesn't have uh, many options, frankly. The, it has a very carbon-based energy uh, uh, re reliance now. And I think it also sees that in the future that it needs to change that in order to be a little bit more self-reliant. Also, the technologies that it wants to uh, use in the future uh, with, with uh, with cars uh, and electric batteries and, and renewable energy sources, it has to find a different way. And I think the, the investment that it's putting into hydrogen is really going to play out uh, through 2030 and 2040 as it has with its new uh, green uh, strategy that it announced uh, just recently. Well, in terms of technology, Mr. Cleary, right now neither renewable hydrogen or um, low carbon hydrogen are cost uh, com competitive when it comes against uh, when they come against fossil based uh, hydrogen so then how do we reduce this gap uh, i think this is a journey that has to start somewhere and it has started in earnest as we discussed earlier across the globe it's not just one company or one country trying this uh, australia has a national hydrogen strategy um, announced last year which has a, an aim of reducing, uh, in the short term, hydrogen to under $2 a kilogram. Uh, that would make it cost competitive 
in many uses, not all uses, but in many uses. I also think that you know, intellect, international collaboration with countries like Korea helps us with the research into promising areas of production and transportation, as well as aiding in the man, uh, manufacturing at scale, which will drive the cost of hydrogen lower over time. Um, you know, if we look at other industries, including the solar industry, the wind industry, they all started at a high cost point. But when these efforts of uh, research, uh, industrial scale and innovation were added, the costs quickly came down. And we're hoping uh, hydrogen is on a similar but perhaps faster path. Well, Dr. Reagan, we've recently seen the alternative fuel trucking startup Nikola do really well this year um, with its market value rocketing from less than $1 billion at uh, the start of the year to more than uh, $14 billion now. And Nikola plans to power its heavy duty trucks with uh, hydrogen power fuel cells. Are you optimistic about this? Yeah, I think it's the start, right? Uh, that, that the heavy trucking, the uh, heavy industrials, we're now seeing the first IPO, the first uh, uh, company now being validated by the economic markets, that this is a something that can be a viable business, and also that uh, it can be actually powering entire industries successfully. And uh, I think it was one of the first examples we can think of that shows that uh, economic returns and economic uh, validation of a hydrogen uh, strategy by a private company. And, and I think that uh, we'll see more of these. Well, Mr. Clay, what's your view on this? I mean, your background being um, from natural gas, uh, will there be a successful hydrogen takeover? I mean, uh, when, you know, traditional batteries are still dominating the market? Yeah, I, I see things as complementary rather than overtaking one or the other. There are many opportunities for um, non-fossil fuel industries to take a place in the energy mix. And hydrogen would be one of these. It wouldn't be, I think, uh, necessarily the only source. And it's uh, most people believe that you need to have a distribution of uh, sources anyway. So I, I, I do believe hydrogen has uh, an important part to play. And if I look at the uh, analogy with the way that the gas industry was developed, it was a synergistic um, approach with countries like Korea that need energy uh, and need to import energy, with countries like Australia, which are net exporters of energy, working together to make the whole supply chain uh, from manufacturer of the product right to the end user work and be cost effective. Well, Mr. Cleary, speaking of Australia, Australia was one of the first countries in the world to move towards a massive hydrogen fueled economy. So how are you building up this ecosystem over there? Um, I think uh, we have some way to go before we can claim a true hydrogen ecosystem. Uh, as our national strategy has pointed out, um, we're working on several themes here. One is the uh, production at scale of hydrogen and at a low cost, which we believe we can do, particularly with our abundance of uh, um, you know, uh, sun and wind through solar uh, electricity to create um, clean hydrogen through um, electrolysis of water. Um, but equally, we're looking at clusters in Australia. We're a large country distributed over wide geography. So we're looking for clusters uh, that can form a um, sustainable base for a hydrogen economy. Uh, gas uh, around cities, around large industries, including steel making. Uh, so the government is focusing on those clusters to give us what I would call the econo economies of scale to uh, give hydrogen the best chance of being a significant source of clean energy for either the city or the industry involved. With a growing number of countries angling for market leadership in the hydrogen industry, Dr. Reagan, what do you think will be the decisive factor in gaining a competitive edge? And which areas do you think South Korea could do uh, particularly well in? Well, I think right now it's all about cost. So uh, R&D, research and development, uh, is going to be key in that. And 
And Korea has uh, done very well in its uh, research and, and development intensity. It's been uh, ranked first uh, in innovation for many years in a row. So I think that top-down innovation uh, from the government, uh, together with the private industry demand, I think is going to drive that cost down. And I think coupled with uh, improved infrastructure and also changing regulations that allow for this to be more widely spread, I think those things will allow it to have a competitive edge and even become more of a dominant player in the market. And Mr. Clay, what are your thoughts on this? What do you think uh, will decide what, um, you know, which is the true market leader in the hydrogen industry? Um, I think you've got many capabilities in Korea that can make uh, give you the best chance of uh, creating a leadership position. Strongly agree with uh, Dr. Reagan on your R&D efforts. Um, I think you've got strong government support, and I believe that the hydrogen economy roadmap and the Korean New Deal uh, focus on this. Um, you also have a strong manufacturing base. Uh, so you've got the, the ability to develop the mobility solutions, the distribution systems, the building designs that will be important for the uptake of uh, hydrogen. Um, you've also got a history of importing energy. So you can develop the long range transportation uh, systems and export manufacturing capability. And I think, um, you know, whilst leadership's important, uh, I think uh, everyone understands the importance of hydrogen to our future uh, energy economy if we're going to go low carbon. So Korea and many other countries are really working collaboratively to try and find the solution. So maybe it's not one where one country gets an advantage over another, but we all, uh, all boats lift on the rising tide with this one. And Korea is a at the forefront of um, international collaboration. I think your Hydrogen Council or Energy Forum in 2018 showed that sort of leadership. So uh, Korea is in a strong position. And Mr. Reagan, what kind of sticking points do you think we need to work through before a hydrogen economy can really take off? Yeah, I think it's those three things, cost, infrastructure, and regulations. Those three things I think are the most important right now. Cost is certainly being focused on through a lot of uh, research and development. It's, uh, you know, it's gotta be cost effective if it's gonna spread widely. Infrastructure is all about converting that traditional uh, carbon uh, infrastructure, the, the uh, gas stations and distribution to, to hydrogen. And lastly is the regulations. Uh, that there has to be regulations that uh, allow for new business models and allow for this new technology to be widespread. And Mr. Cleary, um, what do you think needs to be sorted out before a hydrogen economy can really take off? I mean, there's the question of recycling fuel cell batteries, for instance. Yeah, I think the days uh, of long past where we ignore the negative effects of any industry and just look at the positives. So if you look at the Australian uh, hydrogen strategy, there's an important, uh, a few important elements on this to make sure that the whole of the supply chain uh, from start to final use of the waste products it, it is done responsibly and sustainably. Equally, uh, it's important that this industry ha has a safe uh, attitude and culture and that all countries work to make sure that safety is paramount in whatever we do. And as Dr. Reagan pointed out, if we can work together and have uh, a strong regulatory system and a regulatory system that encourages hydrogen, then I think we would have um, the elements of a long-term sustainable in industry rather than a short-term uh, exciting fad. Well, as you pointed out, hopefully we'll see some global collaboration there on this, on developing standards and safety measures and things like that. But we'll have to wrap up the discussion here. But it was wonderful to hear your insights on this. That was Peter Cleary, Chair of the Australia Career Business Council, and J.R. Reagan, CEO of Idea, Idea Explorer Global. Thank you so much for joining the programme. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you for watching. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow in Korea. Have a lovely day or evening wherever you are. Goodbye.